if you look at the movie without IMDb, it very well could be a film that was shot, you know, a year ago. Except for those awesome, awesome fashions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, right, right, right. Until you have like Sean John, you know. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and today I'm joined by Jean-Claude Lamar, the writer and director of Higher Ed, which releases on VOD and DVD on September 7, 2021. We're going to talk to him in just a second, but first let's check out the trailer, and while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me a lot. Thank you. Yo, Ed, man, you're the only brother I know smoke more weed than I do. PSUU is a very prestigious university with an impeccable reputation for excellence. There are no drugs on this campus. Don't shoot, I gotta go. I said, can't wait to meet my dorm mate. Yeah, I beat that block a lot. I'm a boy, beat the pot. Yo, what up, dog? Uh oh. Why are you not in the real world? You know, getting your hustle on. This is my hustle, baby. Everything just groovy. Have you been smoking weed, Ed? <sighs> now that you say that, yeah, you know, I smoked a little just to kind of like help my memory. Let's go. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Jean-Claude Lamar, the writer and director of Higher Ed, which releases on VOD and DVD on September 7th. It's 20 years in the making because I think it was this movie filmed in 2001. At least that's what IMDb said, but I have no idea if that's accurate. Yeah, the movie was filmed in 2001. I sold it to Sony at a distribution and an output deal. And the company <clears throat> that was releasing it went belly under. Uh, and the, the rights reverted back to me. And um, yeah, so, you know, we finally, you know, we, we had to go back into editing, tweak a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, shot it back in 2001 where, believe it or not, there were no digital cameras available. <laughs> uh, so we shot it on, on, you know, 35 millimeter short ends. You know, you know it's shocking to think just how uh, evolved the world is, you know, has become in you know less than 20 years yeah. uh but yeah, we shot it on all that independent filmmakers could afford at the time short ends as you may know are the discarded uh film actual film that mm -hmm. studios don't use when they're filming uh a movie so they you know discard the canister still has a little several feet of unused film it and that is uh uh refurbished and sold as short ends at a much cheaper more discounted rate so that's what any anyway, that's what independent filmmakers would use back in 2001 we shot the film it's a broad comedy with harry spears and it was a smoker film mm -hmm. that throws it back to like the cheech and chong days um and yeah and I'm amazed. Yeah, no, it, it, it's fun. Like you said, it is kind of crazy to think how much has changed in the last 20 years. Like it did feel like a blast from the past, even though it's it's not that old. It's only 20 years old. I mean, it's not that. Yeah, it's not. You know, when you if you look at the movie without IMDb, it very well could be a film that was shot, you know, a year ago. Mm -hmm. Except for those awesome, awesome fashions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, right, right, right. Until you have like Sean John, you know. Uh, you know, yeah. So, um, but yeah, but you know, it's it's a uh, it's a really funny film. It's a fun film, and like I said, um, it was my first uh, full feature, and I think back then it cost me I think four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to film to shoot that uh, that film, and that was a very very cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2001 well yeah i mean to get uh, all of the footage and also all, all the actors and, and the sets and everything that that that's that's insanely good deal for for a film um so this is uh i guess what was the impetus for like you wrote and directed this so where did the story come from was it just something that you were you know you just wanted to tell this funny story or was there some sort of like personal experience that uh that kind of well, back then, it was off. actually, you know, think about the time. It's 2001. You know, some of the top urban films were like Friday, 
uh, you know, stuff, how to be a player, you know, stuff like that. And, you know, I thought to myself, look, you know, I, I grew up in sort of a pretty unconventional way. I was, lived in inner city um, neighborhood, which is ridden with crime. But yet, right, the center of, you know, my community was Brooklyn College, which was a, you know, a, a, a mecca of an institution, um, you know, and, and it's funny because when you leave the crime ridden blocks neighborhood, you walk into this oasis. Uh, it's, you know, you think you were at Harvard, you know, with the green lawns and a pastoral setting and, the, you know, and I spent a lot of time there uh, as a student, and graduated, uh, but it was a commuter, a commuter school, so there were no dorms. So you would leave this pristine environment just to go back into like the inner city uh, tenement setting. So I wanted to sort of create a world where everything I was seeing around me every day, like, you know, guys smoking weed and, you know, guys who were sort of on the opposite side of the, the track um, would have an opportunity to go to college and bring some of their, you know, hood habits to uh, the university. And so, you know, this movie, uh, that's what really sort of uh, was the genesis of the story. And I love, I love the idea, you know, I, I, it's just like you said, how much has changed in the 20 years? Because like nowadays, I, college and drugs, they kind of go hand in hand, I imagine. Right. You're right. 20 right. years ago, it was still kind of taboo. Ago, yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's one of the things I really loved about this film is it's, you know, you've got, you know, a lot of very diverse characters in, in this setting, but then you also have this drug culture around it, but it doesn't vilify it. It kind of, you know, it just right. exists as part of their lifestyle and it doesn't like control them. Right. It, it's just something that they do, you know, either to relax or to, in some cases, to study or to try to wake up. It's a... Right. Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, drugs, drugs have been on college campuses since the beginning of time, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, whether, yeah, whether it's the 1950s beat generation, you know, Jack Kerouac, uh, whether it's, you know, the 1960s counterculture, uh, you know, drugs and, and the university are like, you know, it's, 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 it's a really interesting dynamics because you really never have one without the other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and students typically um smoke a lot of weed in college <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? or or even you know, or at least experiment right like you know college yeah, is about experiment, experimentation yeah, so yeah. You know. that's right that's right um you know so i think the one of the most amazing things also is the cast right you've got the uh, i'm not going to pronounce it pros from the fujis uh like how did you get this cast was it just people that you kind of knew or did you go like a traditional casting call was there yeah. was there a way that you assembled them yeah, again, you know, part of what we're talking about is the evolution of the world, but specifically the evolution of Hollywood. I mean, you know, you're talking about 2001, right? So roles for Black actors are far and few between mm -hmm. when you compare it to, you know, 2021, right? Where you've got all these streaming platforms, all these Black... As a matter of fact, you know, one could argue it's easier to get a Black film made today than it is to get a mainstream white film made today. Um, that's how much the world has changed. And, and um, back then, there weren't that many Black movies being made. And it was a SAG film. And, you know, we made offers to actors that we thought would, you know, be right in the roles. And, you know, Ari Spears was, at the time, uh, pretty widely known from his stint on the uh, TV show, uh, Mad TV. Mm -hmm. You know, he would do all these impressions and it was, you know, he was definitely on everyone's radar. So when I made him the offer and he accepted, he and I sat back and thought about, okay, how do we incorporate all of these impressions that you do into this story? And, um, and that's what we did, you know? So, you know, the, the Malcolm X bit was, really really cool because it was at the top of everyone's uh list uh because you know spike lee just denzel has just done this you know malcolm x movie and um you know all these different impressions that he had um 
throughout the movie, which is great. Great stuff. I imagine you know Denzel probably turned turned you know the, the offer down right. He was probably busy with something else. So. <laughs> yeah, you're right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and, and where was this filmed? I couldn't actually put. Was it actually filmed in in Brooklyn or is it filmed somewhere else? No, no, else? no. It was filmed in Santa Clarita. It was filmed in <laughs> yeah. It was filmed in Santa Clarita. Uh, uh, okay, that's California. really. Str- I, I I had a, a thought maybe it was in. I, I grew up in Santa Clarita, so I was I wasn't certain. But uh, was was it filmed at like Call to the Canyons? No, no, it was actually filmed, it's funny, it was actually filmed at a medical complex. <laughs> um, yeah, because they didn't, no university, uh, we tried to get, you know, uh, the right to film on some college campuses, et cetera, and we couldn't do it. Uh, no one, you know, for liability issues, and they, had, mm-hmm. they had class, you know, students and stuff. They didn't want to, you know, open their campus up to, to filming, so... We found a medical facility, which was sort of sprawled out across this, you know, this beautiful landscape of lawns and trees. And we're like, hey, you know what? This could be a college campus. Uh, it looked very similar to the college campus I went to in Brooklyn. And uh, so we, you know, started creating with our production designer uh, signage. And, you know, and of course, with our uh, extras team we brought in tons of extras for college students roaming the campus. And uh, we called it Petty State University. That was the name of the uh, fictional college university, Petty State. Petty State. And um, yeah, what was that? That's, uh, that's impressive because yeah, it was seamless. Like I couldn't, you know, it definitely looked like a college and then you had, you know, the, yeah. the track. Was the track also on the medical facility? Did they have No, like no, a- no. The okay. track was actually shot at a real uh at a real university okay at a real university yeah we were able to use the track um interestingly enough our first day of filming there's a scene where where um uh the one of the protagonists in the film uh is you know shows up he's always the antagonist he shows up on the campus to uh to uh, kill our our star Mm -hmm. our main guy ed and um and uh while they're tracking him down the first scene that we were filming that day uh was on the track was them spotting him and chasing after him um i don't know if you recall that the movie but the gang start chasing this kid so one of our gang members who's sort of part of our court extras ripped his leg on a piece of metal beam Ooh. that, uh, which required like extensive surgery. Um, that was our first day on set. I, I guess it's good you were on a medical campus then, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, yeah, yeah, that was kind of crazy. And that, and, and showbiz is such, you know, it can be a very superstitious place. So that was, a, yeah. I can't imagine what kind of omens you all were thinking about when that happened. Oh, we were, we were like, okay, so this is day one of 19. Got it. <laughs> was there ever any thought of um, of uh, Ari Spears playing Ed, or did he all? Did you always want him as uh, kind of the the fun? Well, yeah, you know, always, yeah, yeah. Keep in mind, Ed shows up to the campus and meets this really off, off the you know out of his mind, you know off the rails type of character, and we always thought Aries would be the one. Okay. To play that character, yeah. Uh, and then I guess the, the last thing I'm I'm really impressed with is so 20 years. Did where like did you have the original footage or did did the production company have it and then you were able to get it back? Like, it, was, how did... it was actually it was actually in the lab, uh, Kodak because it was being telecity <laughs> from 2001. <laughs> you know, you had to go it's film. You got to yeah. develop the film. You got to telecity. You got to go through that whole process, and that's what we did. Um, and the film sat there for, you know, 17 some odd years. Oh my gosh. That is, that is amazing. Like, I I can't imagine that that, that's so impressive that they just kind of held on to it. I guess they kind of realized how important some of this original film is, but. Yeah. Yeah. They were, you know, because, you know, we we pay, you know, 
put it in Burbank. I don't know if they had a fault, but you know, they keep films from the 1950s and you know, they got stuff in there for decades, decades mm -hmm. uh, old. So, yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, the other question is it's being released now. Was there any, was this just kind of when you got around to the, having the rights back or was, was this like a package deal yeah, yeah, with yeah, Black, yeah. With Black Magic yeah. Live? Or? Yeah, it was approaching its 20th year anniversary. We thought now would be a good time to go ahead and re release the film. Um, and, you know, I, I, back, I the rights referred back to me about five years ago. I just, you know, I've been doing so many other things. I knew I had to go back and edit the film. and uh, That would take some time. So I gave myself the time I needed to do it. Yeah, it's impressive that you're able, I mean, I know you had the deadline of 20 years, but it's impressive that you, you know, had the foresight to edit, you know, give yourself enough time to edit and then get everything into production and ready to be released on the 20th, 20, 20 year anniversary. That's a, that is a very yeah. organized yeah. way of going about. Pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, so I'd like to go, I call it the lightning round, it's just very lightweight, short questions uh, that relate to the film. I want to see how your experiences map to uh, experiences that happened in the film. I guess the first question is, uh, you know, did you go to college? Or did you kind of go right into entertainment or acting or anything like that? Yeah, no, I went to college. I did uh, five, four and a half years at uh, Brooklyn College. I got a bachelor's degree in uh, speech communications. Uh, I thought it was going to go into speech therapy. Uh, and then eventually decided law school would probably be the way for me to go. And then, um, then um, I don't know, I got the Hollywood acting bug and uh, uh, Spike Lee uh, offered me a role in a movie <laughs> that he was doing. And uh, I've been, you know, in the business ever since. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, your career was probably more interesting than had you gone to law school. Maybe a lawyer of interesting, but I feel like your career right now is, is more entertaining and interesting than, uh, than your, your career. I agree. Career I agree. <laughs> uh, so I guess, what's the uh, what's the weirdest class you took uh, in college? The weirdest class? Oh, wow. Oh, 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 yes. Um, this was actually, I registered for the class not realizing it was a graduate class oh. <laughs> uh still an undergrad yeah uh it was existentialist uh philosophy all right existentialist philosophy i remember sitting in the class for the first week um literally looking around me <laughs> thinking to myself is anyone here anyone yeah. as lost as i am because you all seem to be, you know, you're taking notes, you're asking questions. I am lost, <laughs> completely lost. I don't understand. I mean, literally, I felt like I was taking a foreign language class. Mm -hmm. It was that crazy to me. Uh, you know, uh, the professor, the professor was a sort of airy, you know, voice, very airy just aloof almost kind of not here with us type and she spoke in this monotone and I remember her you know saying something to the effect of um doesn't read magazines or newspapers because they are all an assault on her senses and then she stares out of the window for like, she used to do that a lot, just stare out. There was a big window in the classroom. She'd stare out for like 10, 15 minutes, silence. And then remember she had a class she was teaching and come back to us. Like, uh, yes, yeah, so chapter 18, and I'm like, <laughs> I gotta get out of here. I have to leave this class or else, you know, I, yeah, I had to get, I, so that was the weirdest class I took. I'm amazed you last a week. Let you lasted a week. Like I, I feel like the first day I've been like, nope, this is not for me. <laughs> yeah, well, I lasted. You know, it's funny. I lasted a week because everyone else looked like they got it, yeah. and I was like, okay, it's me. Then it's me. You know what? Apply yourself, JC, and let's do this. Uh, no. So the next question was going to be: Have you ever had to wing it on a subject very quickly, kind of like the the main character in Higher Ed did? But I imagine that was probably the case where she asked you any question, you just have to like make up some answer and just hope that it sounds oh, coherent. Oh, it's so funny! It's so funny you said that. 
So the scene that I wrote in higher ed comes from that experience. <laughs> so, so if you recall, the, the professor says, welcome to existentialist uh, philosophy course. And uh, what we'll be discussing today, and then he goes off in this weird tangent. Uh, and Ed looks completely lost while I was Ed. <laughs> there we go. There, there's some inspiration for the film. Uh, yes. And so, so Ed in college, you know, he, he tries out for the track team. I guess he's all, he, he makes the track team. So did, uh, did you play a sport in high school or college? Yeah, I was on the swimming team okay. in college. I was actually a diver on the team. I did other events, but diving is mainly my thing. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's an intense one. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can choose to pick your college time or your current time, but what is your 40 time? I'm sorry, what's the question? What's your, what's your 40 time? If you're doing a 40-yard dash, how, how fast do you think you could do it? You can choose college oh. or, or now. Uh, I, I won't judge which time you choose. Yeah, let's choose college. <laughs> uh, 40 yard dash. I could probably do that. Probably do that eh, between eight to 10, between eight to 10 seconds. Yeah. A good time. It's nice. That's a decent time. Yeah, eight to ten yeah. seconds, because I, because oh. I, because I could do the hundred yards. I could do a hundred yard dash, uh, in about fourteen. Oh, uh, anywhere between eleven, anywhere between eleven and fourteen seconds. I was in, I was in high school mm -hmm. during that. Time. Yeah, and your forty time would have been should have been faster than that. You probably have the like six seconds. Well, maybe, but, maybe you know, it's my yeah, but yeah. yeah, but I think I think yeah, about eight seconds or something. Nice. Uh, and so the main character Ed has to relocate quickly, which which you know forces him to then go to college. Uh, have you? I imagine you probably have with with acting and being in the entertainment industry. But have you had to, ever had to relocate very quickly for whatever reason? You know, either for a part or maybe something bad happened. You had to get out of town. Like uh, you ever had to kind of just pack up and, and, and move very quickly? I mean, I spent four months in Ghana. Oh wow! Uh, shooting a film for uh, HBO uh, that Danny Glover executive produced. Uh, in conjunction with the BBC. So I spent four months in Ghana and then one month in uh, in London. So shooting this film. And um, yeah, it was an interesting experience. It was cool. Yeah. Um, I got to see Africa and visit Africa on HBO's dime, which was cool. Oh, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the, the fashion choice that kind of stuck to me the most in this film was when uh, I think it was Ed, he wore you know one hat backwards and then one hat forward right on top of it, almost like a Sherlock Holmes type of look. Right. Have you ever, have you ever done that? Have you ever <laughs> proudly? I've never, I've never done it, but that's actually a fairly, it was a fairly popular way of wearing a uh, head, a headgear uh, back in the, you know, the early 2000s. Uh, kids did that all the time. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, yeah, it went, it went, it was right up there with not tying your shoelaces. The things, the, the folly of youth, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the folly of youth. Uh, so the, this movie comes out uh, next month, September seventh, on VOD and DVD. Uh, you know, imagine you're promoting the film, getting it, getting it out there. But uh, are, you know, what's next for you? Are there any other? Uh, films in, in your personal well, vault I'm that you're working on? Well, I'm developing a couple of things, right? Yeah, I'm developing a couple of things now. I've got a World War II picture. I'm developing. I've got a um, I've got a uh, a, um, a a multi-part series about the uh, 6 uh, uh infantry division um uh, they went off to war, black women who went to, uh, were dispatched to uh, Europe to help deliver the mail to the US soldiers who had not been receiving their mail. Oh, wow. um, very, very powerful story about how these women really helped 
and boosting the morale of our soldiers overseas who are not receiving their their mail. That sounds that sounds fascinating. And also, yeah, one of those stories cool. that you don't hear about. So it'd be, yeah, it'd be great to put cool that story. up on the screen. So I'm 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 almost done with the pilot and uh, pretty stoked about it. That's awesome. Well, you can look for that for that it's coming in the future, and then next month you can look for Higher Ed, which is twenty years in the making. And this is uh, Jean Claude Lamar, the writer and director. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, David. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Right. Have a good one. Bye. That was Jean Claude Lamar, the writer and director of Higher Ed, which is releasing on September seventh, twenty twenty one. It's about twenty years in the making. This movie just was never released, and now it's finally coming out. So you can check out his very first work. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot, and make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.